Call to order. Please rise for the flag salute. Chief Cahill, will you please lead us <laughs> to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Lisa, roll call, please. Commissioner Kriegel? Here. Commissioner Landgraf? Here. Mayor Goldstein? Here. Pursuant to the Open Public Meeting Act, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in accordance with the law. So I see we have some uh, residents here tonight. So just to let you know, what we do is we have a two-part meeting. We go through everything at the beginning, which is considered our workshop, and that's where we discuss things. And then, oh, I'm sorry. And then shortly, right after that, we go into our regular meeting, and that is the meeting where we will vote on things. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, I'm sorry. Oh, yes, yes. Yep, that's fine. That's fine, okay. So we're going to start tonight's meeting with a moment of silence of a couple from Ventnor, the Epstein couple, who um, unfortunately passed away in the collapse of that building in Florida. So uh, if everybody would please be quiet and uh, take a, a moment of silence. Okay. That's why it's, it's good to live each day to the fullest with nothing but positivity in our lives because we never know when it's our last. That's just me talking. Um, I get to wake up early in the middle. Actually, I don't sleep, so I get to wake up early. <laughs> Actually, I get to wake up before the uh, cardinal chirps. I need chirps every morning at four, uh, 4.45. Like clockwork. I have I have cardinals and yeah. Yeah. We have construction. Okay, so we're going do we have any presentations tonight? Are we doing um capital? Am I correct? Okay. That's why you're here. So who wants to go first? I know uh, okay. <laughs> So going to go second. That means you have to sit through everybody. Nobody uh, can follow you. Yeah, your your yes. yours is That's the, the you're the, the you are the coup you are the coup de gras. So yes. Okay. So Mike, if you want to just introduce yourself for the people on Zoom, if there are any, and for the the public, okay. Allowing us our maintenance cash for one another term on 
that goes into the problem in the next five or six years with the other thing I'm coming across the city for the next hour. Can I can I also just add that, that, that your background and experience in construction I think was part of the reason why that moved quickly so and and it was again that's that's not a that's not a line item but there's a value so I appreciate it. Well, we were able to make there a lot every of day. progress on site rather than come back and have meetings and yeah. long winded conversations yeah. so yes and no like Commissioner Crable just said, I don't think you heard him, but I saw you because I drive by it. You were there every single day. I'm sure they love that. Yeah. <laughs> they, they weren't happy with me there every day, but I was there every day. Our third big capital expenditure was the replacement of the 33 year old fire engine that no longer met any of the standards. It had an open pad, uh, the fire put in the back were unprotected. So we replaced that with an upgraded vehicle. Budget for that was uh, 750000 We were able to get that uh, in savings of 60000 under that cost by using some uh, cooperative purchasing plan out of the East of Galveston. So, uh, Chief's meeting, I was able to get that information and join that co op and saved us some money. And uh, that new vehicle is multi use, it has a ladder and a pump on it. By having that type of vehicle, we were able to reduce our insurance service organization rating to at least level two, which chopped everybody's fire insurance. If you noticed in the past couple of years, your fire insurance on your property has gone down, which was a positive for the city. And we were able to get that. That was almost 60000 under budget. So that worked out good for us. Uh, fourth big, fourth of, we have six, but there are five. Uh, our fourth big uh, capital expenditure was uh, we replaced all our breathing apparatus, which was 15 to 18 years old. Uh, most of it was paid for with a FEMA grant. We got $250,000 in the FEMA grant, of which we had to pay 10% to the total cost of all that. So $25,000 we received a quarter million dollars So that worked out for us also. Uh, the last of our capital expenditures are very, they're, they're kind of small little groups of, uh, of tools and equipment. Uh, we were very, very in arrears in updating our gas powered saws, our thermal imaging cameras, and a lot of our water rescue equipment was greater than 20 years old. So by purchasing all that, we were able to equip all our vehicles to meet the NFPA standard for all our vehicles now, and it's a much safer atmosphere for us in the city. And having new equipment reduces our maintenance costs by 40 to 60%. Future plans of the department are to continue with our vehicle replacement as needed and our annual maintenance. I'm very big on fixing things before they're broke, to keep up on things so we're not at major repairs are completed early. Uh, we're just here to address the changing needs of the department and the city. And that's all that I have. I must say that you have done a beyond outstanding job as chief. I know you don't like to hear compliments, but when it's it's in black and white, besides what we know, but when it's in black and white, it really smacks you in the face. You have done an awesome job, and you are very taxpayer sensitive. I like to think that when I spend money there, I'm spending my money because I live and work in the city. So you're right. The you, you're right. Thank you very much. I know. I see. Thank you, Mike. And now, and Mike, are, Mike, are you staying or are you leaving? He's staying. He's not allowed to leave. He's staying. He just towed your car. You're staying. Okay. Next, we have uh, Ed Stinson. He's our superintendent of public works slash our engineer. <laughs> he is not boring. I guess I, I, get, I guess I have to put this. Oh, we go over there. I get to look at the TV. Let's start with uh, contracts. Capital contracts have been completed in 2020. First is uh, a lot of work was done on Kingsley Drive. We started with sanitary sewer replacement on Kingsley Drive. And then the last time uh, came on stormwater replacement, Kingsley Drive back down Wellington right away. Avenue uh, and 
Handicap, that's all that. Yes, that's all the ADA, all the ADA. And the drainage system. Still more than that. Yeah. And then that the new Haven and And if you've been by there, it would change the parking orientation there along Winchester Avenue. That, that is correct. So between Troy and New Haven, Owen Winchester, you see the angle parking we work closely with the chief who is uh, very involved in concrete replacement, the extent of the concrete replacement, and the layout of the park. And I think it's been positive too. It doesn't flood there anymore. Great. You used to need More to on case. Yeah. Yeah. You used, you used really? to need to walk out to your car and boots on a rainstorm. Mm -hmm. So you just need to go to park. Wow. Because the drainage drain was that good. Uh, the next uh, capital project is going to be drainage improvement. Marshall Avenue and Oxford Avenue. Uh, it's a $220,000 project. It's going to be on one of the apartments. And this site is constantly out to the center line of the street at night in the wintertime. Uh, so that project has got no end of the year. The next project, uh, number four, is the library window replacement. We also have power wash. I'm on this one. Used to the hybridness of these uh, meetings. Uh, Look, we had issues I, last night at the planning board too. I would feel, but he's, I miss this night. he's almost back to his office. He's back. You can ask him this well. It does, huh? it does look really good. The library cleaned and up. Talk about that chair rail. Did you get that link that I sent you? I did get it. I haven't. Right. I haven't gotten too far. Okay. With it. Yeah. Ah, very cool. <laughs> we have. Yeah. Uh, so that that building uh, was completed, as I said last uh, summer. Our our focus now we're looking at the uh, replacement to the gate that leads out to the fishing area. Hopefully, that'll be uh, constructed over the winter, spring, and and ready for next summer. Uh, the next capital project um, completed in 2020 were the upgrades to the playgrounds. You recall in 2019, I don't have a picture on that one. Um, we 
commissioners uh, redid all the playgrounds, um, new equipment at the library playground, new surfacing at Seashore, and new equipment at Titus Field. Uh, this year in, in 2020, we added additional playground equipment to both uh, the library and actually to the library, Titus Field, and to Fireman's Playground. That cost was a little over $6,000. Uh, the next improvement was the reconstruction of Newport Avenue from Monmouth Avenue to the Bay. Uh, this was funded in part by a uh, DOT municipal aid grant. Uh, the total cost was 241,000. The grant covered $231,000 of that project. That was a flooding problem and also the, the street was in, in extremely poor condition. Uh, next improvement was the Newport Avenue Municipal Parking Lot. Um, I, I didn't get a picture of that, but that change in, in the Newport Avenue Parking Lot was, um, I think, overdue and, and way over, yes. So it's a, it's a nice improvement to that. Yeah. The next, uh, next project was reconstruction of Hampshire Drive. Um, that was funded in part by a DOT municipal aid grant as well. Um, during that construction, uh, we ended up having to replace the storm sewer main uh, along with a section of the sanitary sewer main. So the construction cost was about $500,000, but almost 200,000 of that was covered by the municipal aid grant. We also replaced the sanitary sewer main on Dorset Avenue between Calvert and Monmouth. This was a project that uh, rose to the top of the list because of a collapse that we had um, in that sanitary sewer main. Uh, that project was completed and, and the road repaved, including a curb and portions of sidewalk and driveway. Cost was about $600,000. Uh, we also, in 2020, completed an accessible corner ramp and concrete gutter replacement in Ventnor Heights. Um, this includes blocks on North Victoria from Fremont to Wellington, North Surrey from Balfour to Fulton, North Suffolk from Fremont to Fulton, North Oxford from Fremont to Wellington, North Burley from Fulton to Wellington, and Harvard Avenue from Balfour to Wellington. Um, that project, all the, the concrete is complete, uh, the gas company is required to repave that, those streets, uh, and that work is scheduled to be done in, in September. We also replaced, so number 12 is replacing the Harvard Avenue storm drain outfall pipe. Uh, that replacement has uh, considerably improved the functioning of that uh, stormwater pump station. Uh, so, so far, so good with that. Uh, number 13 is the Army Corps Beach Replenishment Project. That was, uh, the sand was completed, I think pumping completed in December of 2020. Over half a million cubic yards of sand was placed on our beach. Uh, there are still uh, two items that have to be done in that, completed for that contract. That's the Scupper Excavation and the Suffolk Avenue Concrete Ramp Replacement. Both are scheduled for October, um, but the picture that's uh, on the screen shows the, the dunes down um, south of the pier that were reconstructed during that project and the new dune grass plant. And the uh, total Fentner cost uh, was about almost $900,000. That's Fentner's share to that contract. And there was just that if I wanted to add to that, at, at Ed's suggestion, we worked with the Army Corps to get them to clear out or actually create paths for us so we can get our equipment down behind these dunes. Because if you've, if you've been here long enough, you've seen, we used to be able to get under our boardwalk. Oh yeah? We can't anymore. I used to be able to walk Because it's, it's all, yeah, it's all filled in with, with sand. That creates issues with the lifespan of the boardwalk. Right. So we're gonna make an effort, and we've already started it, to actually get under there with, with smaller equipment. And the Army Corps was, uh, was good with creating those ramps That's right. down into those the back dune areas. So that'll be helpful for us doing that maintenance over as long as we can, so that's right. So it's a forever project. It's a needle in the haystack. Yeah. Yeah. It Literally is sweeping it is. back the tide. Yeah. 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 Uh, the next project is a reconstruction of Dorset Avenue from Wellington to Burke Avenue. Uh, that 
also was funded by a DOT municipal aid grant of $310,000. The total cost of the project was $377,000. And that need, came out great as well. It is, yeah. That, that street needed. Yeah. Long time coming. Long time coming. <clears throat> Next project, number 15, is reconstruction of Wellington Avenue from Swarthmore Avenue to Lafayette Avenue. Right uh, that that's the area out past the school that also was funded by a DOT grant in the amount of $222,000 uh, construction is complete and the cost is about 230,000 upcoming projects uh, we have um, count, uh, commissioners have awarded a contract for Richards Avenue and Troy Avenue concrete gutter replacement uh, that work is scheduled to begin in September after the summer. Uh, we have awarded a contract for engineering on the drainage improvements for the 900 block of Harvard Avenue, the 300 block of Cambridge, and the unit block of North Cornwall. Uh, that is engin in engineering design, and we anticipate an August bid date for that project. Um, we Actually, I've gone out to bid for sanitary sewer and water main replacements on Baltimore Avenue, Lafayette Avenue, and Wyoming Avenue. Uh, we are in litigation currently and expect uh, some direction from court this month on those projects. Uh, we will be going out to engineering for a clean video and um, investigation of our storm sewer system along Ventnor Gardens Plaza and also Fulton Avenue on the east side of Dorset Avenue. Uh, we, the, the goal there is to get the line, the storm sewer lines cleaned and videoed. Uh, that will give us a, an idea of what improvements need to be made to, um, to those two systems to uh, improve the functioning and the drainage in those areas. Uh, and finally, the reconstruction of Dudley Avenue and Oxford Avenue between Marshall and Wellington. Uh, that's uh, funded by DOT municipal aid grant. And we expect to go um, out to bid sometime late fall for a spring construction. And that's what I have. Is that Let's it? Get our equipment. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We have <laughs> more. <nice> picture. <laughs> so I forgot to now. turn over the page. Uh, we also in 2020 purchased um, new equipment and vehicle for public works. So the first is a common combination jet vac truck. Uh, so this will help us maintain the storm sewer system and our sanitary sewer system. Uh, the cost of that piece of equipment right there is $370,000. Uh, the next purchase was a new water meter van. Uh, we, we received delivery of this van in April 2020. The cost was $31,000. Uh, that's what our water meter department, which consists of one individual, that's, uh, <laughs> that's his home and, and he takes that to the site and he's able to have all the tools and, and equipment he needs to uh, fix, install, replace water meters. Uh, the next purchase was a new beach rake we actually purchased two beach rakes, a, a larger one that we use on the front beach and a smaller one that we use on the batch back beach. Uh, the cost for the larger machine was 48,000. That's what's being towed behind the tractor in that picture. And the smaller beach rake was 25,000. Uh, the next purchase um, was a new street sweeper that was delivered in February of 2021. The cost was $207,000 uh, and it has been um, a very good investment so far. And we've kept the old sweeper and we're able to, uh, when necessary, we put two sweepers out um, when we have to, or if one needs maintenance, we have the other to, uh, to use in its place. And the final purchase is a uh, new combination backhoe uh, we received delivery of that in April of 2021. The cost of the machine was 100,000. We were able to get um, a credit for trade-in on our old um, backhoe of 20,000, a little more than 20,000. So the cost was wow. um, just over 75,000. And that's that's all I have now. Thanks, Ed. Thanks, Ed. Ed, 
Well, first I'm going to give uh, Commissioner Landgraf credit for recruiting you. <laughs> okay. Say that out loud. Brigantine gets mad every time. Okay, well, I didn't say from where. <laughs> but the combination, and for the first time in the city of Etna, and I don't think it, I don't think it exists in any other city, to have um, the superintendent of public works be an engineer is priceless. It really is. You are a true asset. I'm glad Lance recruited you just by what you showed us and what you've done and what you do on a daily basis with your crew, which a lot of people don't see from weed in the tennis courts to going to homes for this, that, and the other. Um, so I have to say kudos to Commissioner Landgraf for recruiting you and um, the combination of your engineering background and just your whole being and being able to work with the crew from Public Works and get them motivated and doing their job every day. Your expertise is priceless. Thank you, man. We, we, I, I am fortunate. We have a very good team at Public Works. Um, and, and together, you know, that team does a very nice job. But thank you very much. You're welcome. I would second that. It, it's been a pleasure having Ed here and, and uh, definitely an asset to our city, combining those positions. And I'll, I'll tell you, I'll give Dick Carter some of the credit. He's made the suggestion when we were in our campaign. Oh, I gave you the credit. Gave you I know, but I'm going <laughs> to. Um, I gave you the credit. But, but, you know, I worked for Dick for a long no, time. No, I miss it. I know. So but it was, it was, it was, it was one of his suggestions. Is smart move. Combination going. Yeah. All right, Chief. I'm sorry. Okay. And, yeah, and I gotta give him a call. I'm, I'm gonna and, I'm, and last but not least, no, I'm gonna block. I have to block this for a second oh. um, for two things. Um, oh, gonna, I have a I have the beach patrol, but I just want to just say that really briefly that as you, as you went through your presentation, one of the things that is remarkable from someone who lives here is that you can see that you're doing the worst first. You can see that there's a prioritization of the things that we've all seen, the streets at the K and the things that we've all kind of had to drive around. Yeah. The, you mean the roller coaster you know. streets? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, and on top of that, we throw you curveballs like clean up Ventnor West or build a new <laughs> lifeguard headquarters and all that's <laughs> on top of that. So my appreciation as well. So before- Do we clap again now? No. No. Okay. okay. <laughs> Chief Biagi said- I right? see. Um, Okay. So really briefly, the Beach Patrol um, asked me to read this in. The Beach Patrol has been working with the city, updating the secure new rescue equipment. They've purchased a new Van Dyne rescue boat along with a sea dude rescue jet ski. They've also purchased a garage to better store this equipment uh, so it's available for rapid deployment when needed by the fire department during off hours. The purchase along with other pieces of equipment, including rescue fins, oars, and jet ski beach wheels greatly improves the readiness and response capabilities of the beach patrol to better protect uh, the just under two miles of Ventnor beaches. Uh, they have also planned a new headquarter build building. We have been working with all the officers on that, replacing a 25 year old headquarters, which is in disrepair. This new building will further help the beach patrol not only serve and protect the public to its highest level, but will also enhance the city's oceanfront and boardwalk. Um, it's a shed. Yeah. Right. No, no. There's no. There's no. What are you doing, man? Yeah. Sorry. You did no. Barbara Streisand. Don't rain on my parade. No closing happened on the shed. <laughs> this, but not least, we have Chief Biaggi, our police chief. Chester and Portland. Mm -hmm. We've had flash stops, flashing, flashing stop signs. Um, 
um, it's brightened up the area. It's stop signs and stop signs. We can only do so much. I mean, a lot of it's going to fall on the public, whether they're moral and honorable people or whether they're going to slide through or whether their stop signs are not there. That seems to be a lot of what's going on. So what we try to do is kind of put it in the pits. Flash and stop us. I mean, it's so there's no excuses anymore. We want people to slow down. It can't be the signs are bad or we don't have enough warning. We've really gone out. If you go down those areas, you can see their high visibility. Derby. Um, it starts flashing as soon as you hit the corner, as soon as it comes within the uh, yeah. sight of the automatic eye. We've done uh, a lot of line issues. We're doing a lot more line in those areas once we, uh, we get a, uh, a professional company that's going to be utilizing paint that is more conducive to our traffic, whereas latex or regular spray paint is only good for a season. We need to start looking at the stuff that's going to last longer. Yeah, the heat sealed stuff. That the heat, heat, heat apply. What's a because thermo? We have one guy who does that, yeah. and he does it every year now. Yep. So it's just a waste of manpower. Yep. We're a misuse when we can do things better. So we're going to be looking at a lot of the high traffic areas and relining them to make them more visible. But we've done quite a few. We did that. Rosborough and uh, Wyoming at Winchester and Monmouth. We're also planning to do the Denver Gardens Plaza area. We did that. That'll be our upcoming. Like I said, we did uh, Winchester, which is stake out, and I think it's worth it. People may have a different opinion on I love them. I love them. I'm, I've got good them. feedback. Just like our neighbors have said, good. We've well, gotten know, good feedback. I wish we could have them on yeah. every street. I, so I, I, it's not cost of, I know. We really don't have a problem on every block. No, you hit them in the trouble spots. Right. right. Yeah. And that's been forever. So we're just trying to catch up at this point. Ed was uh, great with that. And his team, we literally went out there several times. And with the good comes the bad. The bad was we lost a lot of, we lost several parking spots. Because when we do these things, we are bound by traffic law to correct. And so what used to have been less than the 20 feet to corner is now a solid 20 feet to corner. And I don't want, I don't want to say that's bad. It's actually good because line of sight on a corner is super important looking left or right. If you get a pickup truck or a van, you can't, can't see over that. So a lot of these people are playing the odds when they slide through or slowly go through. What this has done is given the driver a better line of sight for traffic coming in either direction. And I believe it, it's working and it's working, especially in those areas that we've had the most accidents. I can tell you that accidents in those areas have gone down considerably, almost to Couldn't nothing that. since we put them up. So it's something to be proud of. And it's money that's well spent on our capital. Um, and we want to continue to identify those spots and address them in the same manner as we work through. So that couldn't have been done without the public works. Um, more locally, indoors, uh, we added security doors to the second floor for the police department and on the first in basement. Um, and we've added camera people, um, which is uh, Jim Hackenowski's area that we sat down with. And they're going to be doing the same with, I believe, public works. Fire department as well as station one mm -hmm. and station two. We've also added cameras up on the boardwalk at the pier, and we actually have like, public access cameras, public access at right. Yeah, three of them. The right, yep. which is really great. Um, so the surfers don't have to get out of the lot and they can look online and say, "Hey, we got waves. We don't have waves." As long as, as long really as the lenses are clean. Right. <laughs> we had a call today. These things don't I know. The I know. But it's always something, something. Yep. so we're dealing with that too. But it's a quick fix, isn't it? That one probably not. <laughs> okay. All right, moving on to um, uh, we're going to be doing additional cameras. City Hall for the camera Saturday. We've got a lot of cameras everywhere, everywhere here. All the areas of importance, which is pretty much everywhere now, is now covered by some sort of camera. We're also going to be coming with the same sort of secure doors um, that are going to block and require a key fob. A lot of the um, more important areas where money is kept, we, you'll see that even at the doorways you have a camera, which you can get buzzed in. Mine's the first office to have it. We have additional offices that are going to have them downstairs. Mm -hmm. It's really smart. It's really effective. And uh, it actually has made us uh, exponentially safe. Moving forward, we want to get into the kiosk area. Of, yeah. Parking manager. What? Yeah. 
Um, City Hall, as you noticed, during COVID, we were able to identify um, areas of weakness structurally, not structurally, areas of weakness security-wise. So what we started doing with COVID, as you noticed, was we had everybody come in through the Cornwall uh, Cambridge. Cambridge Avenue entrance with the flagpoles. Our future plans are to make that sort of an information slash security area. Like a foyer, in a, in a way. Is that what you're calling it? Foyer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he went French. On the <laughs> That's what you he went to French. Um, it's it's going to be a more of a secure area, letting people in, much like you did, and not slowing down the progress of the needs of the offices or the people. But it's going to add that extra layer of security. After hours, there's going to be a kiosk outside, so that we don't have everybody keep on coming in and out. We really, in this day and age, we really have to think more of uh, securing the building rather than being more accessible, we're very accessible here. Um, but there is a line where you really should draw where it becomes almost ridiculous the amount of public traffic will allow into a multi-use building with police and tax and mayor and everybody. So we've had to tighten it up a little bit. And I think we've, we've kind of thread the needle on that with not taking away from the accessibility, but making it more secure for the employees that are here and the people that come in. So, that's been a big, uh, a big plus. Another thing that we did out of capital was we purchased two years ago body worn cameras and other vehicle cameras. Probably the best thing we ever did. Mm -hmm. We did it out of, partially out of budget, partially out of capital. Um, this was something that the AG's office ultimately is mandating now, and we're ahead of the game. It's a shame we had to put the money out for it because I'm sure there's grants now. Right. For, but it's something that has it has made internal affairs and the getting to the truth much quicker in things where people would come in and complain about an officer or an action taken by an officer. And what we've learned is that people will lie or over embellish or totally forget what happened. And they come in and they make a complaint on an officer and we in fact get to go and look at the camera in real time. Within minutes, people have been honest, I just gave you a ticket, he was bad, he was this, he was that and that. And what we normally, what we find out usually is their perception of it is totally wrong. The officer did what he was required to do and was not as, let's say, insensitive or agitated as they come. It seems usually the other way around is that they were the ones that were causing the problem. These have become invaluable tools for us for uh, emotionally disturbed people, people that you know, get out of control. It's just everything is on film now. And in the old days, it was like, oh, wow, oh my God. People see now that it is a necessity to have these cameras for both sides. And getting to the truth is really the ultimate, um, I guess, the ultimate goal in these sort of situations, as ugly as they can be. They do catch people at their worst, and uh, we have caught a lot of uh, a lot of bad people doing bad things um, with our cameras, and it's helped our cases um, exponentially across the road. So it's just been, it's been amazing. We did purchase a pickup truck. We continue to use capital for our SUVs, uh, which are a necessity down here, especially with the water and everything. Um, we've also done, which was the chief tail of the bit. We've worked really well together along with I've never seen cooperation with this in my career, but where police, fire, and public works get together and we make things happen. Um, Mike Cahill, Chief Cahill, has seen that all of my officers in the back of their vehicles are now equipped with rest with a rescue gear after hours. Sometimes those two minutes where it takes the, where the police get there first and the fire is behind you, my guys can now enter water with an auto inflating vest which they don't have to put their lives in danger now as much as in the past when my guys would be going in to the water, stripping off their gun belts and everything like that, and going in without rescue gear. We now have it, and that's a great thing for a short community that's an island. And it was something that Chief cannot, we didn't even have to argue about. Chief was like, I'm getting it for my guys. What do your guys need? I didn't have to find out my guys need. He did that for me. And he made sure my guys were trained in familiarization. That sort of cooperation uh, in this day and age is, is welcome and it's needed and it's, it's awesome. 
So if you want to look at public safety and public works as a, uh, as a, uh, a starting point for the way to do things and where to share services internally, we got it, guys. We got it locked and we make it work. So I'm telling you that as a citizen of Vetna, I'm feeling pretty damn good right about now. I mean, we've got a, we've done a lot of things and uh, administration, when you work with your administration like we do, you can't beat that sort of stuff. I mean, we've also just purchased out of necessity um, electronic control devices, tasers, if you will. Um, the time has come to have an intermediate weapon in between your voice and a nightstick or a bad attitude and a gun. You've got to have something in between. And we've got it now. People are trained. It's going to be out within probably by the end of summer. Um, Again, probably something that's going to be mandated down the road. We're ahead of the game here. Uh, we made it happen through budget and through capital. And you can see that all of our stuff that we're, we're purchasing, whether it's police, fire, or public works, there is a, a definitive reason. And we put them out there when we find weaknesses or areas that we need to strengthen in our departments. We're not afraid to, to step up and say, boy, it really would have helped if we had this. Or we really need this. It's nice when we all agree on it, and when we bring it to you guys with a proposal, you make it happen. And that's really what capital stuff is for. Capital improvement, it's across the board improvement for everybody. And everybody benefits from the stuff that Ed's done, Mike's done, my department, my people have done, and you guys have approved. It all ends with you guys. And that's awesome. And the other thing is, Tim McGuire, love you, because my mother said a long time ago, Tim McGuire, well, he may pick the vanilla or the EE road, but you will never get in trouble because it's in the water. <laughs> and that is the truth. The guy does not lead us astray. And if Tim says, ah, I don't know, right. then start steering away from that because he will not get us in trouble and he has not during my tenure as chief. So I want to thank you as well. It's it's very important that everybody knows that. It's a listener, it's not just some lawyer. Um, he may take a couple weeks to get back to you. Oh, <laughs> see, there it is. There it is. I'm going to get it back, man. I'm there telling you, is. you know it's solid. Okay? I don't mind the weight, Tim. And it's, it's made it very easy. He saved us some embarrassment, myself and personally. Uh -huh. So, thank you. Let's and that's pretty much where, we, where, where we're at. Let's talk he about was that. going for the slight innovation, and it worked. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, we've done a lot, and it's we've gotten fun. a lot for it, and Becker is... Because of this, better is better for it, and the people are safer, and they can drive their cars without crashing out at the bottom. I mean, I travel this town all the time. All, we're all over the place. It's if you're not seeing it, you're crazy, man. It's better's changing, and better's improving. When we see problems, it's not you know C-click fix or stuff. I mean, that helps, but we make things happen, man. We talk when there's an issue. We me and Ed talk, and we talk about whether it's leaders, whether it's something. We make it happen. And you guys make it happen for us to make it happen for the people. So, boom. Doug. Yeah. Thanks. You, 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 you. No, no. Now you're you're <laughs> you're born born and raised in Vetner. I've known you as how long? Long. 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 Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Everything you said through your capital is there were problems and you found a solution. And there, there was also things in, 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 the, in your report of being proactive, like you said, the body counts. And I think that is so important because it's not what she said and what he said. Um, the tasers or you know, you, you look forward to what we need. You look more proactive. You didn't just do the lights on this street or that street, like Snake Alley, you hit here, you hit here, you know. It, it. So, um, as an officer, as a captain, as a whatever type of lieutenant, sergeant, and, and now our chief. And I think just your just who you are and your personality, you've turned the police department around. And I and I agree. Yeah. You, you and Chief Cahill and Ed, the way you work together, the team, I always say when people come up to me and say, You're doing a great job, I say to them, my team it's we're a public service, right? we're, yes it, it's service. it's you know it's it, the public and just like you come from a family and all of us up here you guys you guys do amazing things you guys put in way more hours than anybody i've ever seen i mean you guys 
guys can shoot you yourself at hand. So let me tell you something. You guys put in every single one of these. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I don't need to praise. Not a I know you don't need to praise, but I need to be able to, to, to say that yeah. because I know, I know, you know, and, and what's even really good is like the best part of dealing with Doug is like when I reach out to him or something eh, and then he goes, okay, and, and I'm done with you. And, 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 but I love it because it's more with the, I'm done with you, love you, bye. But you're always there to listen. And that is very important. Oh, yes. We know that. Because me and her talk <laughs> Yeah. And let me tell you that we talk, we throw things by each other, we spit more things, and we, yeah, we get, we cry, just, we yell. We <laughs> laugh, we cry, we hug. It's like a, it's like a comedy. It's a family. Drama. It's yeah. like, you know, this is us. This is us. Right. Yes. So, you know, right. Like, yes. So, it's not a Hallmark movie. No, it's not a Hallmark. Movie. <laughs> yeah. No. 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 Behind no, the scenes. Be yeah. Yeah. Behind the scenes would be a good reality show. It really is. Yeah. And it's 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 been amazing what we've done. We used to, you know how to feel about it. Uh, I'm good. Thanks. We're good. We're really good. Good. But you're right. Yes, Maria is. <laughs> but you'll wait. But he'll wait three weeks. He might get in trouble by then. Yes. Is that our Christmas committee? Is our holiday our holiday parade committee has already started. We're working on a new roof that could make things. Sure. All it. Sure. I like it. So uh, we're gonna throw it your way, but. Somehow we got we got Shelly and Pete back on board there, and they are in there with a full head of steam. And we got a very good story, and we got good things happening, don't we? And I'm just happy to be with you again on that. And uh, so, you know, Shelly, we're cautiously moving forward with a lot of things, and we're going to have our break. Our twilight parade again, and it's going to be new, better, improved, and different. And just wait for things to come out and happen. So, shit. I'm not only, uh, you know, I'm not only just a person of the. You're going to be on the committee. Presence. I'm also so part of the committee. Know, and president. We had a great with our individual commissioners. I've made new friends that I can honestly call friends, and we we trust each other's decisions. And sometimes we send out, I send out snippet, little snarky emails that, you know, when I get a little frustrated. But you don't when when he needs to set us straight is when he sends those come, out. You don't come back on me with like, what the, no. you, know, you come back with, no. all right, let's talk. And right. we do, and we talk it through like a family yep. should. And that's how things get done. And you guys have gotten things done. And you uh, walk the walk, you talk the talk, and there's no bullshit here. And I like that. So thank you for making my job. Well, I like to piggyback on right. having Shelly and Pete here. Um, Shelly and Pete, your efforts of volunteer, you are two selfless individuals and residents of Ventnor. You go above and beyond and literally almost kill yourself, especially for the holiday parade. You are very appreciated, both of you. And all we the members. We need it this year. We need a, mm -hmm. a post-COVID sort of thing, and we're doing it. Bigger and better, and it's going to be awesome. So, a I, want, I want to just say briefly that um, I, I feel bad for uh, Commissioner Landgraf and Mayor Holtzman that they don't get the chance to meet with you every week like I do, and Maria. We'd be dead. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 because it is it is not just a. Uh, um, it is not just about uh, keeping uh, up to date, making sure the policies and things like that are going forward. Um, you have a way of looking at the sensibilities of the entire city and bringing that in. So we're, we're always bouncing things off of um, Chief because he's got uh, the, the interest of the city at heart. And you you throw on top of that, you miss the, you do, the, the special events. Uh, I'm not gonna do it. You, you miss that special events has just grown into like a, a Force of nature in the city. Unbelievable, right? Unbelievable. So you, we'll you, you have to mention that. Yeah. That is just amazing. amazing. What my what my IG staff has done, which is Jim, IG staff, and special events as they fall on the mid. Yeah. They've just gone on their own. Just they, they're amazing. But you guys have the foresight to see. Yeah, that's right. You know what's the worst that can happen? And the worst that can happen is we have too many people here, <laughs> or it's going to outgrow itself. Right. Or we mm -hmm. need to do better next year. Right. And that's 
kind of see that, and we're all willing to do things different and try things differently, kind of re uh, re image better. And man, we're doing it. It's yeah. awesome. And not, yeah. People it are is. happy. People are happy. That's a good thing, especially now. So collectively as a group, man, we did. So cool. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Well, honey, <laughs> I think you guys can leave, right? Ed, are you, is there yeah, anything? I think he's got to need a... Okay. Okay. <laughs> the net had to hire help. <laughs> That's Ken. Oh, we know. Good man. Thank you, everybody. See you, Chief. See you, Good night, Chief. Chief and Chief. All right. Okay, you ready? We got to do it through the. We haven't done anything yet. No, I know we did. We did capital, but you know what? Those three. It's worth it. Those three reports were um, were dynamite. They were. They were all different, but it. it and I hope. Uh, well, I know Nanette will probably, she's, she's just very busy writing away, and I'm sure there'll be some great ink on it because I think the, vet, the veteran residents, uh, whether they're full-time, part-time visitors, they, they need to um, know what, has, what we've accomplished, what our team has done, because they don't, know, they don't see it. They don't see all that was presented tonight. So, and it is a great team. So, you ready? Yep. Okay. So the following items are going to be scheduled for action uh, right after we go through uh, the workshop portion. So the first thing we will be voting on are our minutes from June 24th, our regular meeting, as well as June 24th, our executive session. The next thing is we will introduce an ordinance, which is number 2021, and it's amending section 115 fees, fish and pier regulations of the code of the city of Ventnor. Basically, it is just amending what we already have in existence, but we're adding on that there is no overnight sleeping or camping out on the pier. So I'm going to assume. Yeah, we had it. We had, yeah, had an issue this past weekend, weekend before. Gotcha. That, so that's uh, what that was sleeping there. So. Yes. So for the public, that's what that have to um, be fishing. The ordinance, they have to be fishing. They can't be sleeping or camping. I mean, during the day, you want to sit on a chair and look at the ocean or read a book. Yes. So. It just it's dealing with the overnight stays. Then we will have a public hearing and then the adoption of an ordinance, which is 2021-014. And this is uh, dealing with the issuance of our um, bonds and notes. And this we discussed last meeting, right, Maria? Mm -hmm. This is not new money. It's just um, this is part of the original bonds we went for. This is a portion that's getting appropriated, right? For the 2021 improvement. Right. Yes. For 21. They have to change. And right. It also includes any grants. Right. Okay. What do you have, Ed? The, um, the improvements, these are the energy improvements uh, throughout the town. This is new stuff. This right. Is, so this is all this, new stuff. This would be but it's not stuff. more money. I don't want the public to think we're bonding more money. That's my point. Okay. This is the original. We're drawing down on it, correct? Okay. That that was my point. Okay. Do you want to go through some of the stuff that were a lot of energy improvement? Um, the, starting with LED lights throughout the town, so all our street lights, it would it would change out uh, the current uh, street lights to LED. There's there's a huge energy savings. Uh, is this is This is easy. Yeah. Yeah. This, is, this is new money. This is new money. Oh, this, this is, is new money. money. Okay. But Last month we did the reappropriation of, of some of the stuff. This, so this is no. This, this is new. The savings from the energy improvements will pay. Right. Okay. Pay that's what I was asking. The debt. Yeah. Okay. That's great. That's what I that's what I was asking. Gotcha. Okay. That's why I had that question. Okay. Thank you, Ed. You're welcome. Next, we will have resolutions that we will vote on by consent. And the first one is 2021-228, and that's a, the next four say promotions, but for the public and um, the media, they say promotions, what they are, we had civil service come in and do desk audits of all our employees, correct? And put them in the correct title. When we 
came on board in 16 and I looked through titles of employees, the title did not represent their job. So um, maybe it's my OCD, but the bottom line is we are, the city of Ventnor is a civil service municipality and they should have the proper title to represent their functions and duties. And we were fortunate enough to have a retired um, civil service specialist from the state of New Jersey. Uh, we contracted with her one day a week and she did the entire thing. Am I correct, Maria? Yes. So, so these are employees that are get. it says promotion, but they're going into the proper title. So they're actually going into a different title. So the first one is 2021-28 and that's Summer Renzi to a clerk two. The next is 2021-229, and that is Mary Garfinkel going to Clerk 2. 2021-230 is Carmela Malfara going to Clerk 2. And 2021-231, Danielle Manera going to Clerk 2. The next resolution, you, you guys okay with that? Yep, they're okay. mostly my people. Right, <laughs> right, exactly. So the next oh. is, uh, and it's important that we did this because we were proactive to do it. If you have an employee who realizes that they are working at a title and call civil service to do a desk audit, then it can cause the city problems being uh, back pay for working out of title and things like that. So this was something that I felt was important to do. Were, we were, they were getting extra money because of exactly. Work and then when they, right. exactly. Right. The next is a promotion. Collins. How do you say his last name? It's, Eisenbeis. Eisenbeis. advice to Carpenter. So it was actually five. Am I right? Yep. Okay. The next is 2021-233. And this is authorizing the approval to submit a grant application and execute a grant agreement with the U.S. Department of Homeland Security for the uh, fiscal year 2022 FEMA, Building uh, Resilient Infrastructure and Community Program. And in what I read to shorten it for the public is this is more of a shift from being reactive reactive spending after a disaster this is more proactive where we um you do the investment of research and things that we could be proactive if there's a disaster and, and we we had um in in that effort we had selected the fremont avenue stormwater pump station in ventnor heights as the project for this application. Great. So that would be to redo Great. that pump station. Yep. Thank you. We go with that? Yes. Okay. The next is 2021-234, and this is authorizing the approval to submit a grant application and execute a grant agreement with the U.S. Department of Homeland Security for the fiscal year 2022 flood mitigation assistance program. And for the public, um, by doing this, this reduces flood insurance for the homeowners uh, through our community rating system. Am I correct? Uh, it, it ultimately it does. Yes, the, this particular project will also uh, that we're asking for is to raise the Lafayette uh, sanitary sewer pump station, uh, which affects all of our um, wastewater, wastewater uh, and, but it also affects our flood insurance as right. well. Gotcha. The public wants to hear that. <laughs> yeah, these, exactly. these are specific projects exactly. that you're asking for grants for. Right. So it's not in general, it's no. not elevating homes. No, it's right. That's why I ever have that little note. Yep. Yeah. It's elevating our infrastructure. It elevates ours, but then yep. for the public's interest, it can reduce their flood insurance, which oh, yeah. if your house is it not raised. Yes, exactly. Okay. The next is 2021-235, um, and that is um, authorizing seasonal part-time lifeguards for the city of Ventnor. I have a question mark on that because I never realized we, I don't, did we ever hire part-time or are these the junior lifeguards? All of them, all of them are part-time. Part Every lifeguard we have. Oh, so you're saying that's chief, how, so, that, so that's how they're referred to. Right. Yes. These are yeah. just the new hires. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Part-time because it's seasonal. I would refer to them as seasonal. Okay. I got it. I thought part-time to me would be like someone not working. You read the list, it's like a who's who. Of so yeah, I know. Pretty every last name connects to another last name. <laughs> right, right. It does. We're all the way so. But when, it, when, when I read it and said part time, I'm reading in my world part time is, of course, what you probably can think of part time. Kudos so. to Colin Abbott for the third Abbott to be on the. Yeah, board. yep. Right. 
<laughs> okay, so we'll go with that. We are. All right, the next is 2021-236, and that's appointing Albert Stanley as our chief financial officer. He uh, was appointed uh, until 12-31-24. The next is 2021-237, and this is um, authorizing a salary change for Williams Crother, effective July 1. Uh, Bill is our tax assessor. He was reappointed, so now he has tenure with the city and a slight um, stipend, $1,500 for him um, becoming, um, being reappointed and having tenure, and he's done an, a fabulous job in the assessor office. He's very... Um, very people oriented and to jump back to Al Stanley, what he's done in the finance department in two years is amazing. And now we have his uh, second in charge sitting in our audience, Amy Stouffer. She's a new hire. Um, she's our controller and uh, I'll take credit on recruiting her from the county. <laughs> Good job. We have your hand, Amy. There you go. The next is 2021-238, and that is authorizing the mayor to execute a contract with DCO Energy. Is this the... He said, he, the okay, this, this, this is, is the, the whole he, he with said. the schools? Uh, well, it's for, it's for the energy improvements. So it's ESIP, Energy System Improvement Plan. It's, it's the bond ordinance that authorized those improvements. This is the company that, that we're, we're going with. Yes. It's not, the school did not end up. We didn't do it. Right. We're not doing it with the school. Okay, but it's that whole energy That's project. Right. Thank you. The next is 2021-239, and that's authorizing a refund of a tax overpayment. That's self-explanatory. The next is 2021-240, and that is authorizing a refund for water sewer uh, overpayment. And one added on to the agenda, only because it was one from Ed is 2021-241, and that is um, approving Gary Brimberg as our um, Ventnor Sport Camp Director. He's been doing it for years, and last year with COVID, he was not, we didn't have the camp, so we had to put it back on. And he is a retired school teacher from the VECC, and he's a great man, and he runs a hell of a program for the city of Ventnor. Next, we will have approval of bills and payrolls. And do we have any discussion items? We do. We okay. have two uh, revocable license okay, licenses. So this is Ed. Uh, yep. Yes, Mayor, thank you. Uh, we have received an application uh, for a residential encroachment um, at 5015 Winchester Avenue. Uh, the property, the structure is being raised to become flood compliant. Uh, it has a, a limited front yard setback currently. Uh, so the access to the building is impossible without an encroachment into the right of way. Uh, the plan is to uh, raise the structure, put uh, two garages with um, underneath and then an elevated access deck, I'll call it across the front. There is room on the side for the steps that will be within the property line. So there's no encroachment for the steps to get up to that elevated platform, but then across the front, uh, that would be encroaching into the right of way. Uh, my recommendation is to is to approve the encroachment application. Okay. Sounds good. We'll do that. Makes sense. Meeting. Yeah. Yep. Okay. The second application is for 6709 Atlantic Avenue, uh, and this this one took me a while to to get through. Uh, this is currently, this is a property that has gone to the planning board and received planning board approval. It's a currently a mixed use. It has a residential unit above a commercial unit right at the corner of Atlantic and Richards Avenue. Uh, the application the, and, and the planning board approval is to vacate the and eliminate the commercial use on the ground floor and turn that space into garage space storage and access to the residential unit above, uh, and then add two stories of residential above the existing residential. So it would be a three-story residential over garage and storage. The existing residential 
has a portion of the building that encroaches into the Atlantic Avenue right of way by a distance of about 1.69 feet. So slightly less than two feet of that building on the second level encroaches into the Atlantic Avenue right of way. Their proposal is on the two additional stories that will be constructed residential above to continue that encroachment. It would be a balcony on each of those three residential levels. Um, so ultimately where, where I came down because it went through the planning board application, it was vetted. Um, I read the DNR from the planning board. Uh, they felt the um, benefits of, of the proposed development far outweighed any detriment. Uh, and ultimately because that existing residential unit has this encroachment so you're, you're not going to see any any expansion of that encroachment it's actually just going to be directly above it um, i felt that it could be considered a hardship because otherwise you would have that first residential floor having to reconstruct that uh, it, it's really a it, it was a tough application for me to um, to really come down on one side or the other for the recommendation, but ultimately my recommendation is to approve. And just to follow sense. up on that, I think the planning board vetted it and they granted a variance to have zero setback. Right. They cannot grant the license for the encroachment. Right. So it has to come to us. Right. It's our right of way. Right. So that's why it's here. It makes sense. And I, uh, I pulled the resolution as well, the DNR, as Ed said, and I read through, because I don't think I was there for that application. I don't know if you were there for that one, uh, Commissioner Creeble. Um, just read through a little bit and they vetted it. They went through and looked at the architectural facade would look odd they would, yeah, it was gonna, it would look without weird. that. It would be, a, it would step back. So it would, it would be a little difficult to, yeah. to construct one and um, it's just a better fit yeah. for the awesome. construction. Uh, I think they're elevating. They're not elevating. They're, not, they're, they're building on top. On so the second and third so is the new construction. Yes. commercial will be, will be yeah, for a garage. For a garage. It'll, It'll be a townhouse. Be right. And, and ultimately access into the residential. Is it three separate units? No. It's one, 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 one townhouse. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Well, it's a pretty cool design. That's so right. So the garage would be accessed off of Atlantic. Atlantic, yeah. 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 Actually, I, I, I don't believe so. I think the garage. Side they put on the side? Yeah, I think it'll be accessed off of Richard. Okay, okay, good. Oh, good. You know what I they think got a waiver called. from the 18 foot deck. Or the right, right. Deck for gotcha. That's okay. Yeah. All right. Do you recall that? Sounds good. That's good. Thank you, Ed. So we'll see both of them at our second next meeting, meeting in July. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Any other discussion items? Uh, I have comments during the commissioner part. Okay. I'll do that. So um, <clears throat> next, we will have a public portion. This is if anyone on Zoom or in the chambers has anything to say on anything that we that I just read that we are going to vote on. It's not anything in general. It's specific to what we're voting on. We will have another public portion at the very end of the meeting if you have something you want to discuss that has nothing to do with what we're voting on. So we have two times. So <clears throat> I'm going to uh, ask for motion to open it to the public. Like I said, if you have something, you state your name, your address, and it has to be something that I just discussed. So, do I have a motion to open to the public? Motion to open to the public. Do I have a second? Second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, it's now open to the public. Jim, if you want to check Zoom, anyone here in the chambers, since you're physically here, if you have anything you would like to ask or question on what we're going to vote on. The chamber seems um, quiet, Jim. Yeah, does anybody from, who is in the Zoom audience wish to question or speak on any of the items that have been discussed, please make yourself known within Zoom by raising your hand within the chat feature and you'll be recognized. I do not see anyone. Thank you. Motion to close. Do I have a second? Second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, do I have a motion to close workshop portion of the meeting? So moved. Do I have a second? Second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'm sorry, we're going to have to take a three minute break before we go into the regular meeting. I think it's the latest one. Okay. Okay. All right. So, motion, uh, to, motion to take a three minute, three minute recess. recess. So moved. Do I have a second? Second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll be right back. To call to order our regular meeting. So moved. Do I have a second? Second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Okay. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes of June 24th regular meeting as well as June 24th executive meeting? Motion for the minutes. Do I have a second? Second the motion. Lisa, roll call, please. Commissioner Creeble? Yes. Commissioner Langria? Yes. Mayor Holtzman? Yes. Do I have a motion to introduce Ordinance 2021-015? Motion to introduce Ordinance 2021-015. Do I have a second? Second the motion. Lisa, roll call, please. Commissioner Creeble? Yes. Commissioner Langria? Yes. Mayor Holtzman? Yes. Do I have a motion for, to open the public hearing on Ordinance 2021-014? Motion to open public hearing on Ordinance 2021-014. Do I have a second? Second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, it's now open to the public for this ordinance that we plan to adopt. If anyone has anything they'd like to speak on this. Jim, can you ask the people on Zoom? Everybody on Zoom who wishes to speak a question on ordinance on, um, ordinance 2021-014, please make yourself known within Zoom by raising your hand or within the chat feature and you'll be recognized. I do not see anyone. Okay. Do I have a motion to close the public hearing on ordinance 2021-014? So moved. Do I have a second? Second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Do I have a motion to adopt ordinance 2021-014? <clears throat> motion to adopt ordinance 2021-014. Do I have a second? Second the motion. Lisa, roll call, please. Commissioner Creeble? Yes. Commissioner Langria? Yes. Mayor Holtzman? Yes. Do I have a motion to adopt resolutions 2021-228 through 2021-241? So moved. Do I have a second? Second motion. Lisa, roll call, please. Commissioner Creeble? Yes. Commissioner Langria? Yes. Mayor Holtzman? Yes. Amy, I assume you have, uh, Amy, our controller will give us our bills and payroll amounts for this period. The payroll for the current period is 642,651.27. And the uh, payables for the current period is $253,188.87. Thank you. Do I have a motion to approve bills and payables stated by our controller? So moved. Do I have a second? Second the motion. Lisa, roll call, please. Commissioner Creeble? Yes. Commissioner Langria? Yes. Mayor Holtzman? Yes. Next, we have our, well, we have this in the record. So it's commissioner reports or comments. Commissioner Freeman. Um, I would just like to add, I see Andy Starr is online that the farmer's market has been pushed back due to the possibility for likely possibility for bad weather tomorrow. The farmer's market is pushed to 1230 30 to four. And I, I appreciate everybody, public works and everybody's help with that. And, uh, get the word out. Okay. Lance? Uh, just following up on kind of the storm, Ed and, and Public Works guys did a phenomenal job getting the city ready for the storm coming through. We're expecting 20 to 50 mile an hour gusts uh, through the morning, through the Isn't night. That the morning. Well, you know, it's really low, so. I know, I know. <laughs> we have to take the good with the bad. We had a good week, good most of the holiday week. Yes, we did. Sunday and Monday were, were very nice. So the city is prepped for it. We've, we've pulled a lot of banners down and flags throughout the city uh, so they don't get damaged. Uh, we pulled a lot of the trash cans back off the beach so they don't wash away. Um, we have barricades out ready for flooding streets. Uh, we're, the city's ready for it. So. Did sleep at your house tonight? Uh, <laughs> he's welcome to, but I don't think he wants to do that. I don't think uh, Suzanne would be too happy about that. Um, generators are all topped off with diesel. They were tested, I think, Ernie said this week. So that was actually just happened to happen. With, what time's high time? We know it's, not, it, it's going to be later in the day. 8 a.m. 8 a.m. Back bay's 9. 9.30. So we're hoping the storm comes through for the night. It's supposed to be midnight to 8 rain. Am I correct? So hopefully it'll stop raining when the tide goes up. So we should, hopefully we don't get flooding on Wellington and Dorset. Because then I'm stuck. Can't get there. You're, you're going to get, well. Yeah, okay, whatever. Yeah, you'll get some. I'm sure. Get some. Okay. Um, so just, we're, we're, we're ready. With, with the storms, that's really all I have for comments at this point. Okay. Um, I don't, I, I think we had a great holiday weekend. I, um, I, I actually, I did get a text message from Assemblyman Mazio the other day. He said he just left Cambridge Avenue Beach and the town looks really good. Good. And I thought, I, and I said, thank you. I said, I, I appreciate you uh, noticing. 
and um, I got to spend some time with, with uh, Hamilton Councilman Joe Girala on yes. Adam Pier and Mayor um, Hodson, Hodson. Yes, Mayor Hodson, Hodson from EHT came the fireworks, the fireworks on our pier, and that's what I'm talking about. Yep, and Councilman Joe Girillo came to the pier. It was a beautiful night, yep. but um, and yeah. I did. It was packed. Never saw that many people on the pier. I never saw that many pe people on the beach at night. Uh huh. Yeah. I mean, on both sides. I mean, like it wasn't like it just a group. It was like stretched down on both sides of the pier, the whole pier. It was beautiful. It was great. And for those that aren't familiar with being out on the pier for fireworks, you can see Wildwood. We saw Wildwood. See uh, Ocean City, and then Margate's kicked off and just spun around, and you saw Atlantic City, Borgatas, yep. and then Tropicana. So yeah. Those, you know, five different. And there were a lot going off on the beach too. But you know, it is what it is. Too much about that. <laughs> yeah. But we did have our police out there on the on the. Uh, I would ask if you're going to set those off, do not put them in the trash cans. We had two when simultaneous you're... trash can fires. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So they would put the <laughs> still uh, yeah. smoldering fireworks into the trash can, and it catches everything else on fire. Right. Just let them either douse them with water or something. Or don't exactly. do or don't do it. Just yeah. don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, there was a lot of them, even. But and you're, and the police that. were. I watched those police on those. Yeah. It was up and down on those the um, quads, on the yeah. quads. I'm like, you know. Anyway, but I think we had. I think you know. It was a good week. It was a good weekend. Beaches looked good. I think the, the lifeguards did a good job. Absolutely People safe. Water's warming up a little bit, so we'll have more people. In. Right. And even though this is not directly under me, but uh, and I don't know about the enrollment in the past. Uh, but my grandson attended it. Um, my boyfriend's son, the um, junior lifeguard. Yeah, right, and for the younger yeah. group, it was Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. The, and the older, the older group is third today, tomorrow, and Monday. They had we had two hundred kids sign up this year. Wow. Two hundred kids. And Megan and, and the rookies take care of that. Exactly. They're doing a great job. And yeah. I heard it. And I heard it's not like okay, let's pretend we're going to be a lifeguard. No. Oh no. They have these kids running and learn. I Surf mean, dash. just it's amazing. But to have 200 kids sign up for a pro, yeah. I, don't, I think we've never had. Yeah, I don't there's think always so. been like little groups of like 15. Yeah. Am I right, Tim? Because Andy yeah. did it when and, she was younger. Andy that group that we were, yeah. that, but I remember oh, yeah. when Andy did it that year, it was like 15 kids, 200 kids. 200 kids. So, mm. um, wow. yeah, a w real wow. A lot. A lot. Yeah. So, um, even though that's not under me, I just thought I'd mention it. The city. Yeah, we're all under Yeah, so. Um, oh, oh, yeah. All right. So now we will open um, to the public. Um, let me do the public before executive session. Yes. Yes. Yep. So um, now we do have a public comment portion, and this is for anyone in the chambers as well as on Zoom if they like to say, if they're here to ask a question or have an issue. Um, once we open it up, if you do, if you're on Zoom, Jim will let you know how to talk. If you're in the chambers, you come up to the mic, you state your name and address, and you say whatever you want to say to us. So, if uh, I could, before we go into that, I forgot one thing I wanted to talk about. Okay. I'm not to belabor this, but outdoor dining and restaurants, you're, if, if you haven't responded to our letters that we sent out to you, please do so because you're going to get a letter in the next 10 days from Maria telling you that you must respond with your hold harmless agreement, a plan of your outdoor seating. Uh, you need to get back to us with that or you will. Insurance. We, insurance. If you don't respond to this, if you ignore this last letter, you will not be able to have outdoor dining on your premises. So everybody who has that now needs to get back to us. We need to issue permits and licensing for these areas. We need to make sure we have insurance. And I'm gonna reiterate a problem that we've been having of late clean up your areas. You, we're allowing you to use our right of ways and our sidewalks for these outdoor dining spaces. You are responsible for cleaning those areas. That does not mean clear your tables and put them in city municipal trash cans. That is your trash. It gets picked up by your commercial hauler, not the city taxpayers dime. So please, restaurants, if you're listening, we're going to send out another letter this week. I'm going to have a personal conversation with a couple of them that are our most egregious violators. Um, got to keep the properties clean, guys. That, that's all I'm asking. Maria, can you have the intern um, call the business she was as well? I'm working with her. Yeah, yeah. We'll work here. I mean, I know they're sent letters, but yeah. well, we'll work on the letter first. Okay. Get out, get that out. Okay. So I'm just saying, you know, there's, there's only there's. I mean, we have a lot of restaurants, but make a phone call. 
just as a reminder. There's only a couple that I'm going to talk to. Okay. I've, I've already spoken to two of them. I'm going to speak to a couple. Okay. So we're good. All right. So do I have a Sorry. motion? That's, that's okay. Do I have a motion to open to the public? So move. Do I have a second? Second motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. It's now open to the public. Jim, if you can see if anybody's in Zoom and if anybody here in the chambers would like to speak. Jim? Is anybody in Zoom who wishes to speak on any items, please make yourself known within Zoom by raising your hand or within the chat feature and you will be recognized. Once recognized, you may turn your video on and speak to the commissioners. While we wait for the, anyone who's on Zoom, is there anyone here in the chambers? That, yes. We know who you are, but we have to still do what we have to do. So state your name and your address. Shelly DeRazio, 5000 Boardwalk, that your city. <laughs> I just want to follow up to uh, what Doug Biaggi said about the Twilight Holiday Parade. It is Saturday, December 4th, the first Saturday in December. And uh, I'm also part of the Ventnor Beautification Committee. And after a long year and a half, we just want everybody to know that next year, save the date, May 22nd, 2022, will be Chef's Night Out, our ninth year. May what? May 22nd, Sunday, May 22nd, 2022. Will be our ninth year. Two, two, two. Two, two, two. Two, two, two. I love it. Thank you. Thank you, Shelly. For all the stuff you do with well. everything you do. And 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 the a couple of the restaurants to, to, to join in, I'm sure. Yes. Yeah. Well, we'll get to that next year. I'll make sure you get them. Anyone else from the chambers? No? Jim? No, I don't see anybody in Zoom. Okay. Um, Andy Starr just commented that uh, he wanted to thank special events at 6ABC today. I hadn't mentioned the, uh, the time change as well. Oh, good. Um, and awesome. some posters on their Facebook page. So uh, uh, thank you. Andy and Penny and Maria, um, they do a hell of a job too. Um, a we have great volunteers in the city of Ventnor, and that's not easy to come by. So, um, before we adjourn, we are going into an executive session. Tim, we're not making any decisions. Okay. Did you guys want to, did you have something to say? Well, you need to come up. Oh, okay. Your foot's asleep? All right, isn't that fun? Did we bore you? Huh? Did we bore you that your foot? No, my foot, not me, it's my foot. Good. You have to state your name and your address. Michelle, Cecilia, and Bettner on the Bay Condo right down the street. Just uh, just something I was wondering, is there, because I saw that this was about signs, if they could put signs on Wellington Avenue by Acme, because like saying turtle crossing or something, because I drove down Wellington a couple of days ago, and there was eight, eight I counted them, smashed turtles. And that's so disheartening oh. to me because I know the females are coming up to lay the right. eggs. Is it? There is a sign there, though. Is, is there? Is, I that, thought there was, and that's a county road. Uh, Ed, will you check? Because I know. Okay, they're good. But I, I eight? Eight. I count. Well, not all in one clump, but like two here, three here. Because I know there's, I, I've seen now, unless it fell down through a storm in the winter, but Ed will check into it. We'll check it. I mean, Absolutely, right away there. The but we'll... tubing. I mean, I would volunteer to help with tubing up like they got. No, uh, it's a, it's county road, and uh, then you deal with the water and the flooding. And I'm not an engineer, and I'm not a land use planner, so I'm not going to even you got that right. Check got my title right. Look at yeah, that. I'm not going to, but um, I I feel for you. Yeah, I do. Because uh, you know what? Even when I go down the ski beach, I walk my dog. I see the turtles come up and lay their eggs. Aren't they cute? They're adorable, but now there's twelve big. Tin cans right on top of where they all laid their eggs by the two picnic benches. Who put them. so that's our trash, that's where we keep our extra trash cans for the cops. We put them over in the dirt area, okay. Um, so can they put them we'll, just on the cement yeah. part? Yeah, really, we will, we will, uh, oh, because they all need a little help. We all need a little help, right? <laughs> yes, hey, can sure. we talk to the county about putting up? Because I, I know I will the, talk. The, the causeway has that yep, the little fencing. Well, little, it's it's actually half of HDP pipe. They right. cut it in half. A little something, something right. to put in the ground. See if the county will let us. We'll get volunteers to put it in. Right. Yeah. Can't jump over. The they can't get over. Yeah, but don't they? Aren't they trying to get over 
for a reason? But they think there's a beach there. There is. Oh, there. okay. So they're they're safer on one side. Yes. I got you. I'm not a turtle. Okay, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for your suggestion because we are going to look into it. Really? Yes. And can I ask one more thing? Sure. I'm always at my mother's house in Bentner Heights, and there's always these cute little ducks walking around. And if they make it that the babies are born and able to walk, and they come walking by the house. She'll have like five, and by the time she gets down to the corner, she'll have two because they drop in the trains. Is there any way to put like a kind of a screen and then mm -hmm. that keep the trash from going in the? And it also the, blocks the drain, so you, it you blocks can't. It or yeah, you it. can't. So I mean, not a screen that. I understand what you're talking about. That the water could go through. But the as soon as as soon as that screen fills up with debris, then no water gets into that and it floods the streets. So there's a we have to look at both sides of that. I'll tell you this right out in front of Maria Mento's house this week, two days ago, yesterday, we had a duck rescue from between the fire police and public works. Uh, they rescued five little ducklings out of there, I think, right? Two. 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 So there's five total, but two got stuck. I think there's three eggs that have okay. hatched. So <laughs> when we see them down there and then you notify public works and, and fire department, they'll get out there and they'll Pull the grate and they, pull, pull the yeah, grate and get them out. They've, yep. they've come yeah. with fire yep. trucks to take a little yep. chick out. Mm -hmm. They are cute. They put a sign up in Bentner Heights saying, slow down, there's ducklings coming. I don't, I don't know because the male and the female both got run over. So oh. we won't be getting that. I've never, I usually, I see ducks crossing and people stop. Every, I mean, I like I, they literally stop and nobody beeps or nothing. They just waddle from one side to the other. But some people but are no. just, yeah. All right, well, thank, thank you. you. You love nature. <laughs> so do I. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. And thank you for you and your mom coming to the meeting tonight. No, that, that's, that's important. It's wildlife. It's important. But that, and thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? No, we're nope, good. We're okay, so we, I, I will not, I, I'm not adjourning our meeting because we are going into an executive session. Executive mm -hmm. session, we need, we have to have the public out of here and the doors closed and the Zoom people will be put into a waiting room if they want to hang out. As our solicitor um, said, we are not taking any action. So if you, you're willing to wait out there and come back in, but there's really... Amy, I think you can go, right? Amy can go. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yes, Amy can go. Thank you for coming. Thanks, Ed. Thank Ed, you. thank you. Thank the guys Hi, for me you. for getting the city. Shelly, Pete, Nanette, and our two newcomers to our meeting. Thank you for coming out tonight. Salada. That's my dad. That was my dad's best friend. Yes, you did. That's right. That's right. I remember you came. You live on the corner. Right? Am I right? I, how did I remember? You live on the corner of Burley. Yep. I've seen them walking down the side. Same here. Thank you. Thank you. And you might have to help the last year. Thank you. Shut the door. Can you pull that close? She's really talking about my foot. I'm sure no. he was. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm in rare form. I better not get another one of these for another meeting. But to clarify on the record that you're not a turtle. I'm not, I'm not a turtle. <laughs> <laughs> um, do I have a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Do I have a second? Second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. The New Jersey Open Public Meetings Act permits the discussion of certain matters within executive session as an exception to certain provisions of said law. Bender City Board of Commissioners wishes to discuss certain matters which qualify as exceptions in executive session. No action binding upon the Board of Commissioners will be taken within executive session and this discussion conducted in closed session will be disclosed to the public when legally permitted when the public interest will no longer be served by keeping such matters confidential. Matters to be discussed are litigation with Hanson House versus versus City of Ventnor and litigation with Sandstock versus City of Ventnor.
Okay, you're ready. You're good to go. Clean your gates. Yes. All right, as you indicated, it is now into a PPM. Uh, talk about two issues in executive session. Both matters of litigation. The first was Hampton House versus City of Bender. These are various tax appeals concerning properties on Austin Avenue. Uh, we'll talk about a lengthy amount of time regarding uh, these particular, this particular, these particular uh, items of litigation. And some ancillary issues. Uh, no formal action was taken at this time. Uh, we also discussed another matter of litigation, St. John versus City of Ventnor. That was where the city of Ventnor was sued uh, by Sandstock claiming damages uh, in that they're going to have a Latin festival in the city of Ventnor in the year 2013, and Ventnor prohibited them from doing that, and therefore. <laughs> Sandstock alleged there was an oral contract made due to their conversation with various city officials at that time that by not letting them have the concert uh, or Latin Beach Festival in June, that that contract was breached. I uh, will discuss that matter and no formal action. Thank you. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Uh, I'm getting there, I'm sorry. Motion to adjourn. So move. Do I have a second? Second motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned.